This is Analog, a unique new multi-link rear suspension system which improves over existing designs by delivering over a half pound weight saving, room for two water bottles in the front triangle, capacity for the longest dropper posts, efficient pedaling performance, greater stiffness and increased reliability. I'm Tim Lane, the founder of Digit Bikes. I'm a lifelong cyclist and a mechanical engineer with over 20 years experience developing award-winning and race-winning bikes and components, and I'm here to introduce Analog Suspension and the first bike model to use it, the Digit Datum. I'm a minimalist in that when I go for a bike ride, I'll leave things that I'm not going to need at home. With that in mind, I ask, would you choose to ride around carrying almost a pound of unnecessary hardware? Analog doesn't have these. And would you expect a bike frame, which relies on a chain of multiple links and wiggly pivots to deliver a straight tracking ride? Analog uses a dozen fewer pivots than some established suspension designs. Given that I am going to carry water, however, which is heavy stuff, I'd prefer it mounted low down on the frame in water bottles rather than weighing on my shoulders and making me hot. Digit's analog suspension uses fewer bearings, fewer axles and fewer links than other suspension mechanisms, less even than many so-called single pivot bikes. And it uses rigid, triangulated structures for the front and rear frames, a single stiff link and sturdy 15 and 30 mm pivot axles. Let's talk about that fewer pivots thing some more. In addition to saving weight and making room for water bottles in the front triangle, reliability is increased because there are less parts which could break, the environmental impact is reduced because less parts get made, and stiffness is improved because there are less parts to flex. But wait, there's more! Other advantages include the clean minimalist design, it looks more like a normal bike and less of a contraption than other suspension bikes, and the straight seat tube allows for the longest dropper posts even on small frame sizes. I should mention at this point that this first model, the Datum, has a mullet configuration with a 29 inch wheel up front for stability and control and a 27.5 inch wheel in the rear which allows you to drop the seat and your butt about 40 millimeters lower without getting buzzed by the tire. Also the seat tube is aligned with the bottom bracket. This means that riders on large frame sizes don't end up positioned too far over the rear axle. This is a problem with many current bikes which cite effective seat tube angles in their geometry charts. The most noticeable aspect of analog suspension though is, strangely enough, also the least noticeable that the shock absorber is hidden inside the frame's top tube. Far from being a gimmick, this brings several practical advantages. It's very stiff because it uses well-supported, well-spaced fork bushings to control the linear path of the rear triangle's upper pivot. The slider is an analogue to the upper link of four bar link suspension designs. Four bar linkages move the rear triangle's upper pivot along curved paths, though they disagree on whether those paths should curve upwards or down or sideways, or maybe the curves are all a compromise. Regardless, the analogue's trajectory remains linear and controlled along its entire path. You could say that it's a happy compromise which combines the better attributes of the industry's current leading designs, or that it avoids the shortcomings of each. Either way, it eliminates all of these parts for just this. Ok, we're going to get into some nerdy stuff here. One compromise made by all other suspension bikes is that the rear shock needs to be packaged to fit between its pivot points, the eyelets. This limits the volume of oil which can be used, sometimes there's only a thimbleful, and it limits the length of the air spring which can make things too firm at the beginning or the end of the travel, or unsupportive in the middle. To work around these limitations, designers have employed high leverage ratios, trunnion mounts, metric sizing, piggyback oil chambers, which further limit the ability to carry water bottles and other technologies. The analogue system, however, simply eliminates the space constraint problem altogether. Simplification again results in less parts, meaning better reliability, lighter weight, and reduced environmental impact. Now, Vile video making etiquette tells me I should go on at this point to build trust by telling you about myself, explaining the project goals, and the source of my inspiration. It also tells me to only talk for three minutes. I've been talking for much longer already, and I've barely scratched the surface or taken a breath in that time, so I'm sure you'll agree I've covered enough technical stuff for now. I'll be transparent, and I'll cover that other stuff in writing and perhaps in other videos, so please read on, like, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. But most importantly, please pledge your support for this work. It's the future! I've personally funded the design, engineering, prototypes, patents and more. I'm thrilled with the prototype bikes I've built for myself, but to share this with the mountain biking community, we're going to need enough pre-orders to cover tooling, materials and all that other good stuff. So please, support this project in whatever amount you can, but preferably at the bike frame level, they're rad.